and I started working on the Downtown Club 57 show in 2014. Um, we had a handful of those films on our list, Rome, um, Wire on 4, uh, Rome 78, James Madison's film, and Shadows in the City. This film that we heard about, only from our paper, no Wikipedia on it, nothing on it at all. We were lucky enough to be played and to get to know Clayton really well and to see and actually acquire Clayton's making of Shadows in the City footage, which is amazing. And if we had time, we would have told her that. Um, and then Clayton introduced us to the mysterious and frightening Harry Lisa. Intimidating guy. You know? um, and at the one show, he was a Russian, uh, an ex Russian diplomat or um, part of the royal family or a we found out that he's all those things. So Clayton's going to come up and say 10 minutes with some slides, and then Eric's going to come up, and he's got 10 minutes, and I'm going to keep him the 10 minutes. Um, here they go. Okay. All right, Clayton. Yeah, Clayton. I'm very to be here. I'm Ernest Clayton Patterson. I'm an artist documentary downtown. One of the people I documented a lot was a person by the name of Lionel Zippin. Lionel Zippin um, 
was really Harry's mentor for about seven years. And when Harry Smith came to town, the filmmaker, the first person he hooked up with was uh, Lionel Sergeant. Long story short, working with Lionel, he taught me a lot about angels. So, I'm not sure about the whole God thing, but angels I believe in. Ron is an angel. So, thank you. And uh, Ira Rusmoff, there was a person by the name of Roger Kaufman who was running a, a group called the Tattoo and Body Art Society downtown. Uh, people weren't really interested in it because Roger was about 30 years ahead of his time. He was also including like, you know, body uh, painting, piercing, fingernail painting, hair, the whole thing. So Ira and I took the uh, club over and called it Tattoo Society of New York. And that took us both on a long adventure that lasted many years. Certainly for, for me, more than 10, it lasted up until now. And some of the things that came out of the Tattoo Society was uh, out of the 80s. Tattooing was illegal in 19, uh, since 1961 in New York City. And so it was always underground. So leading at the Tattoo Society gave a real opportunity for new people interested in finding out about uh, tattooing and that. Uh, we uh, took them in. And out of the Tattoo Society became a lot of the people that became legends and great and professionals in the, in the uh, tattoo world. People like Sean Dusty. There was a number of people came out of there. They used to come follow with a lot of people. And so um, that carried on, and then by the early 90s, Art and I were the, um, the, the presidents of the Tattoo Society, we ran it. Art was great to work with. Uh, what really excited me about him was his painting, his art, and his persona. Art is a big persona, he's like uh, always on. <laughs> and so, um, you know, as we went on, we, uh, Eventually got to, uh, a lot of the Tattoo Society turned into the movie Shadows in the City. And that was the base of that. And then after, uh, that was about 1992, and then after Ari moved on with the film and took it across Europe and different places like that, then I stayed on with the Tattoo Society and took it on with uh, Elsa Renza. Elsa is my partner, and she's, as we say, as she says in caption, we are playing. So she's like my other half. So that was, uh, that came out of the Tattoo Society. And then later I started connecting um, Austria to the tattooing in New York. There's been a few books uh, previously, but they were mostly short interviews and things like this. This is a much deeper look into it. And I have to get volume two done because volume two is much more. Hey, Harry, it's your turn. Are you sitting there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, this is one of my paintings, actually, but I first want to, uh, there's other things I want to talk about first. And uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Clayton. You were terrific. And, uh, okay, it's been a great honor, really, to be able to show you my show, be able to present my show in the Museum of Modern Art. I am uh, very, very grateful for this. And I'm going to tell you about the show, Shadows of the City, came to be. Now, since early childhood, I had two basic two passions, painting and film. And my first experiences with uh, uh, film actually came with an 8mm camera, which uh, I was around 14 at the time, and I attempted at that time to make a documentary of my paintings. So I was only, you know, I was only very, uh, you know, was young. In any event, I was already, I, I already developed a, a familiarity and a passion for uh, expressionist cinema, uh, experimental cinema, uh, films like uh, like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, as well as classics like The Wizard of Oz, and of course, also great actors like Chaplin, who is also a director, of course, and Lon Chaney. Now, suddenly, at 14, I figured I, I had better advance to the making of a, my own dramatic film. So, this uh, was a five minute uh, uh, movie, which I shot in black and white and on Super 8. And the stars, I, I featured my elderly aunt and uncle. And the plot was uh, interesting. They walked from one corner of the living room to that corner of the living room, then back to that corner of the living room, and then to that uh, uh, 
quarter of the living. And, and, and that, that was my show, my film. I'm never having won an Academy Award for this. Back to the painting I learned. However, I never forgot, I never forgot filmmaking. It always stayed with me. Now in my uh, 20s, I did a series of uh, documentaries, shot on video, about art. And uh, this was uh, done for cable television. We featured painters and sculptors, both from uh, Europe and the United States. Now, okay, how Shadows in the City came about was in 1980s, the uh, owner of one of the galleries that I exhibited in was thinking of making a movie. It was, it was really contemplating it, but we could not really agree on a topic. So, therefore, I, I realized that I had to rethink everything that I was doing. And what I did then was, I, I understood that my, you know, the budgetary uh, aspect of it is extremely important. So therefore, uh, what I did was, re I, I just took everything from start and I, I did it over. So, uh, at that point, I was determined on uh, doing the film, but I dismissed a lot of my uh, previous uh, uh, projects. So, I realized I needed to get a simpler route and I got to the quick. And um, I had a friend at the time, this is a different, different project, a friend who was a fine painter who had led a very troubled life.